Brandon with BeesusProductions.com here for volume three of my platformer video dev blog. Uh, first and foremost here you might notice that I do in fact have a new title up top. Uh, no longer is it just called platformer, prototype, or test, whatever I had it before, but I do have a potential working title here now of, uh, well, of the game itself. Uh, it may stick, it may not, but uh, it's something better than just calling it a platformer. Uh, so far I'm going with Beezus, Journey for Vitality. Vitality referring to our Vitality cards here. Um, this is going to be the primary item that is collected in the game. As you can see here, I've got a pulsing shader on there and a nice bright green light, so it definitely stands out from the rest of the objects and it would be impossible to miss upon collection or upon sight. So uh, with that being said, uh, let's get into some details of what I've recently changed and updated. Uh, first and foremost, I just recently did this one, in fact, this morning. Uh, my water is no longer just a box, but I actually have a box with a plane on top of it. The reason I'm using a plane is because I do have a wave script, which will actually manipulate this plane so that it looks as though the waves are moving or that the water itself is moving instead of just having a solid box. Uh, hopping game here and show you what that looks like. Right now I got my... Oops, uh, we'll just turn that music off. That was just some placeholder music I was playing with here. Um, yeah, we don't need you. Uh, we'll use you, but we will not do that. All right. So, all right, here we are. As you can see, just watching the edge of the water here, we got some uh, minor movement. So, looks a little bit more like water by having that instead of just having a solid box. We don't need to have the Mario 64 look of water, which, while functional, isn't very pretty. Um, so, that being said, here's the new water mechanics. First of all, as soon as you hop in the water, you do rise to the surface. No matter how high you may fall into the water from, you fall in and automatically rise to the surface. While on the surface, movement remains the same. As you can see here, moving around, um, just using the points or the controls, I should say, are just like they are outside of the water. This will maintain until you decide to dive. Once you dive, we go under the water. As you can see, we've got an idle animation for swimming and then an actual swimming animation. So, that being said, controls are the same while underwater as they were before. And as soon as you rise to the surface, we revert back to our standard controls where you just point the analog stick or the keys in the direction you want to move. I've also smoothed out the camera here while underwater. Previously, it was pretty sharp in terms of its rotation, so instead I'm lerping to a new position based off of that. So as you can see, you know, it looks much nicer, much smoother. Gameplay itself works much nicer in the water now. It works very similar to uh, the Rareware platformers on N64 like Banjo-Kazooie, because not all the time, or I shouldn't say uh, not all the time, but the majority of the time here, you'll hop in the water and you may not necessarily want to have your controls change, so we can just keep that. And again, as soon as you get on land here, we revert back to normal. Hop in the water here, and we're still running. So, that's the new water mechanic. So far, so good. Otherwise, in terms of throwing and everything else, that all retains the same functionality as it did previously. If you have a box or a dive check, you will uh, not swim. If you're swimming and you pick one up, you revert back to walking. Same exact mechanics as before. Moving right along here, I do have a new object I was playing with. Still unsure if I want to use it or not, but I do have kind of a a tube inspired by the likes of Jazz Jackrabbit 2 or more notably Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, this is not like the tubes you may see in uh, Mario 3D World. I don't own the game but I've played it for a little bit at the uh, the demo kiosk but um, I guess you could say partially inspired by that but the tubes are only one way. You can only enter from one end. If you try to hit the other uh, it'll just spit you out because the force itself is just being applied one direction here. In this case it's going up and around so uh, we can give that a shot here. You hop in the tube and you get shot forward. While you're in the tube, I'm updating the player's rotation to make it look like they're getting sucked through and make it look more like they're, uh, you know, actually being propelled in the tube. Uh, this does, in fact, work for objects other than just the player. Let's just get rid of this first. You cannot enter the tube while you're holding an object or a throwing object I should say, but if one should find its way in, it does handle all of that just like uh, it would handle the player. So any rigid body can enter these tubes and the force will suck it on through. Playing with ideas for that, but uh, that was something I just decided to try and see if it was possible. Uh, beyond that, what do we got here? Um, some scripts I've created here for, you know, rotation. This one, for example, is basic rotation. Just keeps going and going and going. We can, however, I did create another one here where I can 
I actually control it so it rotates at a set interval. So instead of just a constant rotation, uh, we will throw our rotation timed on there. We'll put this guy on here. And now it will rotate on a specific axis, you know, based off of which one you choose, at certain intervals. So it'll rotate 90 degrees every, you know, one second or so. And then it'll stay there for three seconds. So when we implement that, by default here, we'll wait, wait, wait. After three seconds, we get nothing. Hmm. What could the problem be? What if we change our axis? Oh, I just realized I didn't put that on the proper object. <laughs> For some reason, I put it on a different object. What did I put it on? I have no clue. It's on a particle effect for some reason. Okay, duh. Um, I knew the script worked. I wouldn't have showed it off otherwise. I have tested these things before, uh, before saying that they work. All right, let's throw you on there. Now, after three seconds, we will see a 90 degree rotation. There we go. And so every three seconds, it will rotate that set amount on the axis specified. Lerp to the position, sit and wait. So again, this will be for, you know, platform uh, kind of events where you want to have something that isn't constantly rotating and gives the player a chance to actually stand on it. Beyond that, um, minor thing, which doesn't really show on the front end at all, but I did get rid of all my Playmaker integration. I have since created scripts for everything that I would need instead of Playmaker. For example, upon the player picking up uh, one of the uh, vitality cards here, I had a little kind of celebratory animation. Well, I discovered I could just program that since I found it much easier to do these things in C Sharp than with uh, Playmaker. I actually wound up having to Google how to do things in Playmaker that I already knew how to do in C Sharp more so than anything else. So at that point I said, screw it. We're just going to convert it all. So for this, I am actually doing a coroutine and it has the exact same functionality except it's all in code. So upon picking it up here, <laughs> get our little celebratory animation and a little uh, kind of a uh, you know collection uh, akin to your Mario 64 stars akin to your uh, banjo kazooie jiggies things like that otherwise I did add some new animations as you saw in the water previously we had an idle animation for swimming uh, for this uh, wall jumping animation changed it yet again kind of uh, didn't like what I had before so I changed it to kind of look more like they're leaping off the wall so nothing much has changed here with regards to wall jumping. That has all been the same. Another object I did find is when you collect uh, one of these, for example, it waits for the player to be grounded. So I figured, well, what if they collect it above the water? Um, how's that going to work? Well, I did discover that I can mess with the coroutine itself, if I was able to pick it up here, to uh, wait for the player to either hit the ground or if they hit the water to do something different. So I actually have a different coroutine for when one of these is picked up in the water, which works like as you just saw, it'll not lock the player, not celebrate, it'll just have the same kind of jingle and the same text animation pop up here. Um, otherwise, that's about it in terms of major things. I have been making some progress here on my first actual, oops, my first actual level here. And we'll go ahead and save it. I do have some basic functionality, which is kind of what spawned the Playmaker, whole, the whole Playmaker change in the first place because uh, what I'm going for here is wind turbines. Uh, you have to hit a button to activate them, and after activating all of them, uh, you will trigger an event. So after messing with this, I discovered that, hey, I'll just script it. I'll get rid of Playmaker. Playmaker's more hassle than it seems to be worth for me now. So this is uh, kind of what I got going here for the start of level one. Not much, but I do have some basic geometry and things set up. Been playing with shaders, been playing with trying to get things to blend because obviously some of these are going to be uh, meshes, whereas the rest of this is terrain. Uh, trying to use meshes for the entire level just didn't work for me. It didn't look natural enough, so I'm going to try to blend things in here right now. It looks a little awkward, obviously, because we don't have textures yet on the uh, a lot of the terrain, but uh, I should be able to get it blended up quite nicely, so it's uh, fairly seamless. So this is what I got so far of level one. 
And that's pretty much the bulk of the changes now that I've been making to the game. Uh, I will actually cut out here. I'll load up a different project and show something I was experimenting with, but I uh, wound up having to abandon. It was actually a ledge grab. So give me just a few, and I'll be right back with that. I am back here to show off my failed ledge grabbing. Uh, I'm just going to pull up my archives here. As you can see down here, I added my mechanics. These are my archives, by the way. Every day I tend to do an archive here, zip it up, and just put it on a backup drive. That way I can kind of keep snapshots in time. Uh, anyway, fixes and tweaks, looking good. And remove ledge grabbing. So uh, <laughs> within a span of about three days here, I was so excited for these first two days. Thought I had a great system, but uh, by the 14th here of July, I realized, oh, this is not going to work at all, and I'll show you why here. Uh, we'll fire this up, and my two ledges are up ahead here. Ah, uh, we don't need those. Those are just going to look annoying. So we'll head up here to the ledges. You know, seems all right. Seems all right. Oh, look at that. We're grabbing, and we pull up. You know, I had a smoother animation before. This is just a immediate transform position update. But I uh, had it all working. It seemed great. You know, you match up to the height. No matter where I move this box, I'd be able to grab onto it. I'll show that here now. Had all the logic going great. So if we, you know, bump it up here, for example... Uh, we should still be able to grab it. So we'll head over here. Uh, might be a little harder than I thought with this. Well, this is one of the problems I encountered that I decided to say screw it. So, uh, you know, I had it working great based off of Pro Builder meshes, based off of standard meshes, all this sort of stuff. The way I was doing it was I had my player and I uh, added a grab box to them, so uh, we might need gizmos here. Anything, or not a grab box, I'm sorry, a ledge grab box. Anything that went into this, anything that went into that, that would be our ledge grab point. So when this box matched up with the height, the collision height of the uh, object trying to grab here, anything tagged with wall, much like my wall jump, I would stick to that. I would uh, stop the player movement in pretty much all directions and lock them to that position until they pushed a button or dropped off. However, it, it just couldn't work. I couldn't seem to get it consistent enough to work. You know, it worked for the most part when I wanted to experiment with it. It looked good. You know, we could drop down. We could pull up. We could, uh, you know, do all that stuff. But the problem is... It, it, it only seemed to work when I jumped from a ground position. See, even like right now, it's not catching. I, I couldn't figure out why. I think it had something to do with the trigger stay. Like if it enters this before, you know, we try to grab onto it. And I just couldn't seem to get it to work. It works fine if you jump at it like this. But again, as you can see here, we're not going to grab this one now. I, I don't know why. I couldn't seem to figure this out. A lot of tweaking and a lot of things like that. So in the end, I decided to scrap it. It, it was working great in theory. In fact, we'll go try this over here uh, quick and see. Yeah, my old wall jump animation. And even then, I couldn't seem to get the player to consistently grab it. So it worked great there. Uh, again, once that box hit, if it if the Y position of the box matched the uh, extents and everything, uh, the whole math formula I had going on to basically say, if we're at the top of this and the grab box or the ledge grab box matches that, lock on and stop them from moving and rotate to face that wall. So again, I, <laughs> I got to play with a lot of quaternions and deal with rotation, which is something I hate, but I did learn a lot from it. And uh, even though the feature wound up being abandoned, at least it did kind of give me an overview in uh, working with rotation and things like that. So again, I just couldn't get it consistent enough to want to make it a solid gameplay staple. And even playing the game now, I don't find myself wishing I could grab a ledge very often. So, you know, I, I guess I don't miss it too much. It was more of an experiment to just see if I could do something like that. And uh, I could, but not completely. In fact, if if somebody out there is working with the platformer kit and would uh, like to try to take a stab at it, I'd be glad to share the code I had existing for it. And if we can get uh, consistent results, you know, you're more than welcome to my base level of code. But at the same time, you know, if you have an idea for how it might work better, how it may not, I guess at this point I'm just more curious than anything. But uh, 
Yeah, I'd be uh, more than happy to share the code that I do have for it. It's not much. I think it's like five or six lines. Again, a lot of it's just math to determine. All right, here's the object that we're touching or that we should be touching or the ledge grab box is touching. Let's quick find out, you know, the extents of it and the collider size and where it is. And if we match up uh, the two variables, we'll stick on. So a lot of that was done. But again, as I've been saying, just not functional enough to where I'd want to implement it full time in the game. So uh, with that being said, fun experiment, but unfortunately a failed and abandoned item. It's probably the first thing I've actually put a lot of work into that I've wound up having to abandon. So sad to see it go, but I guess at the same time, I guess I'm more sad that I couldn't get it to work above all else. So uh, yeah, with that being said, uh, I sound redundant now, but uh, I guess that about wraps it up for volume three of my video dev blog series, and I will definitely be doing more soon.